Parshas Mishputim. Please put a like and subscribe. After B'nai Israel received the Torah on Har Sinai, Moshe Rabbeinu taught them all the mitzvahs and told them which virus to keep away from. It was a beautiful spring day, and David could not wait to finish his homework so that he could go out and play in the park. Finally, when he was done, after his mother checked his homework, she gave him a bag of chocolate chip cookies, and David ran out to play. In, in the park, he sat down on the bench, made a bracha, and then ate up all the delicious cookies. Then he threw the bag onto the ground and ran off to the nearby swing set. He cut the only available swing and had a great time swinging higher and higher. All of a sudden, David heard people screaming. He saw people running and children crying. He went closer to the scene and saw that someone was lying down on the ground. A man was screaming, Call Hatsala! David ran closer and saw that the person lying on the ground was none other than his elderly neighbor, the friendly Mr. Blum. It seemed as if he had broken his foot, someone said. He needs to be taken to the hospital immediately. David suddenly felt his cheeks become hot. He hurried to disappear from the scene and went to the other end of the park. He couldn't bear to see Mr. Blum lying on the ground. How did he fall, someone asked. He slipped on the plastic bag. One of the kids must have thrown it on the ground, another person answered. David sat down on a bench and felt like crying. Maybe Mr. Blum slipped on the bag that I threw down, he thought to himself, feeling very sorry. Finally, David heard the sirens of an ambulance. Only after the ambulance drove away did David get up and go home. Late at night, David lied on, laid on his bed, unable to sleep. All he could think of was poor Mr. Blum in the hospital. Then he heard his father speak. He was talking to his mother in the kitchen. They put a cast onto Mr. Blum's foot in the hospital. I heard that he's feeling so much better and that Baruch Hashem, he is home already. David was so relieved to hear that. Before falling asleep, he promised himself, I will never again throw anything onto the ground. And if I will eh, see eh, someone that someone else threw, I will pick it up and put it into the garbage can. It is forbidden to dig a hole in the ground and leave it open since someone might fall in. We must be careful not to leave glass in the place where it might fall or break. And surely you are already know how wrong it is to throw fruit peels or bags onto the ground where someone might slip and fall. The Torah warns us not to cause harm to others. While walking on the street, if I ever do find or a watch or a toy or something of its kind, although it's pretty tempting, one thing I never do is keep it for myself. Because it might belong to someone else. I know that there's a mitzvah of returning lost things, and I feel so happy when I see the joy in t brings so when i find something that isn't mine get i get to work without delay i prepare a big and clear sign this is what it does say hashara zaveda found girls watch in the park the owner can get it back according to simonim call three four three eight Four six two eight. When the right girl will show up and describe the watch to me, I will give it back to her and perform the mitzvah happily. We have two kinds in the kitchen and separate dishes too for meat and for dairy. Before we eat supper, which is 
Flashing, Mother covers the table with a flowered tablecloth. When we're done, she takes it off and covers the table with a chicked tablecloth. With we eat breakfast and lunch on. When I finish eating supper, I take my plate and fork and place it in the Felicia sink. At breakfast, I drink a glass of milk, and I know that when I'm done, the glass goes into the milkig sink. The Torah forbids us to eat milkig and flesh together, and after eating flesh, we must wait a few hours before we may eat milkig. For supper today, we had delicious chicken cutlets. When I finished eating, I was ready in the mood of eating a chocolate bar. Then that I knew we had in the pantry. I was about to say, "Ma, I finished eating. May I have a chocolate bar, please?" But then I remembered that I was flushed, and I know that eating a milkshake chocolate bar is in. A big Avera, and now you know too. Speaking the truth, we finished eating quickly, and then I knew the time had come. Mother had promised chewing gum for each and every one. She was so surprised to find when she opened the pantry door a bunch of empty wrappers scattered on the floor. Mother's face grew stern. What is this all about? The kids stepped back in fear. They were sure that she would shout. They all shook their heads. No, it wasn't me. They said, "Yes, it was plain to see." How Meryl's cheeks turned red. I don't want Mother to find out, so she'll shake my head no too, because. If she'll know that it was me, there's no telling what she might do. Think twice before you speak," said another voice inside her head. Rather than to lie, it pays to tell the truth instead. Mira went over to her mother and whispered in her ear, "I ate all the chewing gum. I know it wasn't fair. I'm really sorry. I regret my mistake." Next time I see a pack of gum, you can be sure that I won't take, and then you won't believe it. But the next morning, Miro knew her mother gave her a huge a hug and said, "Miro, I'm so proud of you to tell your mistakes. We make mistakes every day, but to admit and apologize—that's." Very good, I must say. And that is the end of Parshas Mishputim.